Well, good afternoon. Welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter Neal. I'm a UK reseller at buy and sell antiques and collectibles and hopefully make a profit. I'm going to share with you today my haul from car boot sale and I've had some spectacular things and some really, really rare items, very, very cheap. And to give you an example of just how rare some of the stuff is, I'm going to start off with my first item. I have bought a hand-painted, moulded porcelain plate. And it may not be everybody's bag or cup of tea. This plate dates from 1745 to 1750 and is produced by Meissen. You see the moulding. It's got like a basket weave moulding around the top and swirls on the side. I have got photographs to share with you in just a moment. It is a marked plate on the back. Let me share the photos with you. Okay, so if we enlarge this. So there's the uh, plate. You can see there the molding and the ribbon around the edges. Absolutely beautiful. All these flowers are hand painted. It's got a gilded uh, rim. Now, the only downside with this plate is if you can look right through the center of the flowers, there's a tight, tight hairline. Um, it doesn't extend past the center of the um, plate. However, it is still there in the center. It could probably be bleached out. So it's invisible, but it'll never be gone. But um, bear in mind, this is not far off a 300-year-old plate. 1745, so it's about 275-year-old, this porcelain plate is, and produced by one of the best names in the world. Meissen. You can see there it's gone way to the gilding as well as that hairline. Beautiful, beautiful plate. Uh, get to the mark. Well, that's the back of the plate there. You can see that hairline again running down by there. And there's the mark, the cross swords of Meissen. Now, how do I know the period? Well, in all honesty, I am a general dealer, not a specialist. I knew it was Meissen. I knew it was early Meissen. I didn't know when it was. So there is a Facebook group uh, called Meissen Porcelain Statues and More. And I actually put the plate up on there for the expert's opinion. And they all concurred. It's 1745 to 1750. So if anybody got anything they think may be Meissen or is Meissen and they want to date it or get a pattern, join the group. It's a closed group. So join the group and they will help you with any Meissen you got. Now this plate, because of the hairline in the center, cost me a whole one pound, one and a half dollars for a 275-year-old Meissen porcelain plate. Now, I haven't figured out yet how much it's going to sell for. Um, my 18... Early or mid 18th century Meissen rather um, sells for stupid money. It really does. However, the condition is not perfect. It's got the hairline, it's got a little bit of staining, and it's got the guild way around the rim. So I don't know what it's going to sell for yet, but it's probably going to be somewhere around one or two hundred pounds. Um, so it co cost me one and a half dollars, and it's going to sell for probably two to three hundred dollars. How was that for a start to the day? But uh, as I say, if anybody is got any Meissen or anything they think is Meissen, go to Meissen Porcelain Statues and More on Facebook. Private group, but a good group. Okay, next was another one pound buy. Now look how small this is. It's about two inches in diameter. But look how beautiful it is. I've got photos. Now, I don't know if you can see it there. This entire paperweight, bar for about two millimeters on the rim, has been ground out and polished smooth. So it's a hand-blown uh, paperweight, and then they've ground the pontal mark where it's broke off the rod and then polished it smooth to finish it off. It's in beautiful condition. I'll share with you first the photographs of it. Okay, so there's the paperweight. Now, 
I didn't know who the paperweight was by. Now, look, there's a little gap at around one o'clock there between the Mili Fiori, um, a very small gap. However, look at the quality of the use of control of space on there. Uh, look at them beautiful, vibrant colours. This rose in the centre, yeah, rose or flower in the centre, whatever it's called, um, is an identifier for one factory, which is Klitschy. Now, did I know that? Nope. All I knew was when I saw it, to buy it. It was spectacular quality. It was a beautiful um, paperweight. Now, what you find with a lot of these, there'll be a signature cane or they'll be signed on the base. But this is an antique Klitschy paperweight. So you're talking 1855 through to about 1895. Again, owes me a pound. I bought three paperweights for a fiver. This one came in at a pound. It was the last one I picked up. The other two were larger, and they were two pound each. I'll show you those in a moment. Um, but the Klitschy one owes me a whole pound. Now, have a look at this. I found the identical Klitschy paperweight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a website uh, that specializes in Klitschy paperweights. This top one here is $10,000. You know, moving down, 8,000, four and a half thousand. These Klitschy paperweights are crazy money. Now, I, I'm going to skip it and go straight to mine, which is down here on the bottom left. So that is basically what I've got, albeit mine is a bit better controlled in the gap. This one's a little off center here. Um, so mine has got a bit more control in the uh, spacing. And they've listed theirs as uh, antique, klitschy, concentric, milliflory and rose miniature paperweight. One and three quarter inches. And they're asking $675. So about 400 pound. Bearing in mind, mine's perfect and an identical purple weight to what they've got, more or less. Slight variation in the colors, but that's the pattern and the, the paper weight I have. And if you come across to eBay, again, they're not pulling tens of thousands, but they are pulling, you know, 1,400 pound sold prices. 1,000 pound there, 971, 750. I'm sure there's a similar one. There's a similar one there to what I got, albeit it's in um, blue. Somebody here sold three together. Um, they've just put them as a bundle of three antique Millifioris, and they didn't put the Klitschy name down or anything. However, these two here are very similar to what I got, but they only had 500 for the three. Uh, there's one there. Very, very similar to what I got. Clear glass, 450. So, so far... That is what Splot Market has produced. An antique Klitschy paperweight and an 18th century mice and porcelain plate already today. My next one, same same person. Um, most of this come off the same dealer, to be honest. It was a house clearance dealer. Um, we have a Victorian dump. Um, what that means is it's a 19th century Victorian glass paperweight known as a dump. They call these dumps. I think they were done like at the end of the day with whatever glass was left. And they do some spectacular ones of these. This one's quite a simple one with just the uh, air bubbles, the control of air bubbles. But it's a large paperweight. It's about five inches. It's got a big snapped sharp pontle in the center there. So where it's been broken off the rod, they haven't smoothed it at all. They've just left it sharp. Um, it's not that sharp that you'd cut your fingers, but it's sharp. And it's in beautiful, beautiful condition. Now, I'll just give you a couple of examples of these Victorian dumps um, as to what you can find in them. I've only gone highest price on the sold. I'm not going to show you all that are available. But you, you see here you have a portrait in this top one for 300 You have some flowers there, 175 They pull good money. You have almost like a volcano erupting here. Oh, it's a better example underneath there. Um, they put down the flower, but it's up and over, almost like that. You have one year almost identical to what I've got, £95 sold or best offer. Uh, another one there with the bubbles, just the air bubbles, £77. £70 there. 
You can see the sort of monies these are pulling, and don't get that one owes me a whole two pounds. You got more with the flowers. Another one there, 55. And they're probably going to keep on going all the way down. I'm not going to go all the way down. Um, you can see there, there's more than enough sold to justify me asking sort of 70, 75 pounds for this one um, and taking an offer on there. But for two pounds. My other one I had, I'm not going to show you any research on it or anything, but it was quite a nice Kath Ness paperweight. You have the, I'm assuming, some sort of eagle flying over the mountain top here. Um, it is signed. Keith Ness, Scotland. So the three paperweights owe me a fiver. Um, normally this type of range, a limited edition, but there's no numbers on there to suggest that. So nice little paperweight there, Scottish paperweight. Then you had the Victorian dump and the antique Clitchy, Victorian Clitchy paperweight. They cost me a fiver for the three. What can I say to them? Absolutely beautiful. Next one I love. Now, I paid probably more than I should have for these, um, but I absolutely love them. This is the first, and it is a grog sheep. Grog is a type of pottery made in South Wales, about 10 miles down the road, and they started out making rugby players and things, and they do novelty sheeps. Normally, they, they stamped or signed John Hughes or Grog Shop. Uh, these earlier ones weren't all stamped. These are not marked, but these are the earlier version. If Wales were flattened out, it would be bigger than England. That's what the saying is on this one. You get some absolutely areas like I love mint sauce and things like that, which for a sheep is quite comical then, and it's your mint sauce on your dinner. Well, I don't. I don't eat meat, but um, still. Beautiful little thing. That's the first. And then you have this one, which is a little racist, if you like. England's okay if you like foreigners. The expression on the sheep does not represent the expressions I hold. <laughs> uh, before anybody shouts at me. But these are very, very collectible. Now, you find these grog sheep. To be honest, you can find them at car boot sales for one and two pounds. I've had plenty of them for one and two pounds. These are large. Now, I've had them half the size of these. These are large examples. They're in good, good condition. And I bought them off trade. And he knew what he had, and he charged me a good price, to be honest with you. Now, I can tell you now, I'll show you if you like, uh, in a moment, on eBay, they'll range sort of from £20 to £40. Um, you can buy them as low as £20. I paid £20 each for these. However, because of their size, the condition, the, the older version, and the, the expressions on them, I rate them at about £45 each. That's what I'm going to be asking for them. But I'll show you one or two of the grog sheep now and some of the different expressions they have. They're really absolutely amazing quality and funny. Okay, I've just done a random Google search here to find more examples for you. Um, here's a good one there. Uh, preserve wildlife, pickle a prop. That's rugby related there. There's the mint sauce one. <laughs> Ban mint sauce. John Hughes, grog sheep. I'm going to have a look if I can find the ones I got. Uh, what's this one? Happiness is having Welsh friends. I <laughs> love it. Uh, I'm Welsh. <laughs> if anybody likes a Welsh friend. Uh... Oh my god. Yeah. See more anyway. Any more in there? Uh, happiness. Uh, I think that's all we're going to have. Let's click on shopping. Just see the prices on here. So you can see, look, there's one there, we'll miss you, right, is only £20 on eBay. Uh, Band Mint Sauce is £30 on eBay. However, I can tell you now, the prices do go up. Okay, according to this, okay, according to this, there's only one grog sheep currently available on eBay at £29.99. Um, if I go to the solds, 
So you had one year sold a 45, a grog sheep. I don't know what he was depicting. Let's have a look. Nothing. He's blank. Uh, Bam min source 21 there, 29, uh, 25. Someone sold a collection there for 170, 20 pound. There's quite a few of them in the sold. And you can see they're not pulling crazy money on here. However, where are we? What's the size on these? 25 pounds. They're not given the size. And that's actually got damage that could be touched up. So I've actually bit the bullet there and I've paid £20 each for these. However, the dealer in question uh, did actually sweeten the deal by throwing me in a sterling silver, so a solid sterling silver fork which weighs 35 grams. I haven't weighed it yet. He told me it was 35 grams. <laughs> um, which is this. Quite a nice patterned fork. Um, a fully hallmarked example there. And quite an old one too, looking at that. I can see Victoria's head. So, he's sweetened the deal by throwing in the fork. Even if I was to throw this, the fork in the, in the scrap pot, it's talking for probably £15 a scrap. Um, therefore, the two um, sheep then come down to £25. But I'm still going to be asking £45 each for them because of the size and what's on them. I actually still rate them. Next, I bought two pieces of Beswick or Beswick pot pottery. Uh, I bought them off the same clearance stall as the Meissen plate and the Clitchy paperweights and the other paperweights. The first one I purchased was this which is a mallard duck. Everything you want to know with Beswick is wrote on there. So it is what it says on the tin. It's a mallard duck by Beswick. Uh, by, I can't read his name without my glasses. It looks like Peter Sutton. And mold number 1518-1. It's in good condition. And... Here we have one, let me just check I'm sharing. Here we have one that's actually currently up for sale by Peter Scott, um, 99.99. Hello, Daniel. Yes, please, I will have a fresh one. Don't use this cup. Um, so we have one here, 99 pound, 99 pence, um, currently up for sale. There are no others up for sale. However, as usual with eBay, you come across the sold price. There's one sold there for £30. You can't figure out from one minute to the next with eBay. For what reason, I don't know. Well, that's in good condition too. And they sold that one for £30. So you could have bought one for £30. Or you can buy one for £100. But there's no in-between. So there'll be an in-between with mine. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to price it yet, but if there's one on there for 100, one sold for 30, I'll probably go somewhere in the middle of 65 um, and leave her at that. Next piece is no different. Just as confusing on eBay. I've pur uh, purchased this, which is a Royal Dalton figurine called A Good Catch. Now, any fisherman out there is going to love this, and let's be honest with the, the fish there. And it's a fully stamped up piece first. If it's got a scrape through it, you know it's a factory second. Um, that's how you tell seconds. They put a deep gouge through the mark. And it is a good catch, HN 2258, in good condition. Now, I can't remember if the Marlard duck was a pound or two pound, and the large one was a fiver. So it's either six pound they owe me or seven pound they owe me for the two, which is less than ten dollars for the two. And the Dalton Good Catch, the highest price is 155, well, 155 pound. Coming all the way down here, 90 pound, 85, 80, 70. And they're all the same HN number and same size. 
and they come all the way down to, I think it's 40 something pound. Mm. They come over to the solds, they've sold highest is 50, but they come all the way down to like 20 pound or 30 pound, 29, 25, down to 19, 19 pounds. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason. Now, the only thing I can think of is some people are members of the public, they just bang the stuff on as a one off. Um, and they don't care what they get. And then you have, obviously, dealers that want the proper price for the gear. So I'm not 100% where I'm going to be with it yet, but there's a difference. 150 asking all the way down to sort of 50, and then 50 sold all the way down to 20. So, However, for 6 or £7 the pair, I'm probably going to ask £60 a piece. £60 on the duck, £60 on the uh, good catch, and that's where they'll sit. So... It is what it is. Off the same dealer as I bought the um, Grog Sheep and the had the fork, I purchased this. And I must admit, I have never seen one before. And I can't find another on Google, period. We've all seen a cross. But have you ever seen a cross and a spoon? Thank you, darling. So on the one side here, obviously, I think is depicting Jesus. Not sure if it's like the Tudor rose or something in the corners. And on the other side, I have no idea. Is that King David? I don't know. Not sure. There'd be lots of religious people now shouting at me, telling me who it is, but uh, it makes no difference. I have no idea. I haven't searched it up yet. I've just put it in now quickly to make the film, but there isn't another one. I spent an hour, hour and a half down the car boot sale while I was selling, looking for one of these on my phone, and I couldn't find one. I even done Google Image Search. Now, for those of you who don't know what Google Image Search is, there's an app now on Google where you can take a photograph of something and just search by photograph. And it takes a few seconds, and it scans all the images on the internet. Don't ask me how it scans them so fast. And it'll match up your image with similar images. Um, nine out of ten times, it'll find what you're looking for. So if you need a little trick on finding something, you don't know what it is, just take a photograph, image search it, and someone else will tell you what it is. Couldn't find it on that either. Now, I've paid a bit of money. This isn't the heaviest. It's about 25 grams of silver, and I have paid £23 for it, so about $30, maybe a bit more. Um, maybe about $33. However, if you collect spoons, find me another one. Because I can't find another one. And if you collect religious artifacts, find me another one. In fact, find me another one. Just give me an idea on price. Because <laughs> I can't find one. Uh, I rated it. I thought it was unusual enough. And I paid the money for it. £23, £33, $35. Um, I don't know why I'm going to price it up bad yet. But it'll be a decent profit on me if it sells. Okay, this next piece has zero antique value whatsoever, but it is a novelty piece. Now, I have got a large two foot plus tall uh, pottery uh, tiger. <laughs> no, I haven't lost his brains, but it is an umbrella stand or stick stand. Now, this one's got like a foam base, it just an insert to stop the stick or the umbrella just smashing the base of the um, the stand. And I'm going to leave her in there where I sell it. Um, and this one was produced in Portugal. It's Portuguese. Um, don't ask me to read it or I can read it's Portugal at the bottom. Now I tried searching for an umbrella stand as a tiger. Now, this one cost me a whole five pounds. And I bought it. I thought, you know what? I thought it was novelty. Somebody's going to like it. I thought it was worth 30, 40 pounds. And if it wasn't, I'd put it back out of the car boot sale just as an attraction on the stall. I thought somebody will see it on the stall and think, yeah, I like that. And they'll come and have a look at it. However, now I cannot find another Portugal one. I can't. So I can't get a price. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is a little tip because I learned something with them 
I ran a search for Tiger umbrella stands. And what I did find was a Tiger umbrella stand without the head, obviously, the head cut off. And have a look at these. You can see there, there's loads of them. By load, multiple sellers. I don't know if there's any lower down. There's another one, but they're a different version. That's like a, a spotty, that's more like a leopard than a tiger, but uh, okay. Um, and another one there, tiger uh, umbrella stand again. I think that one's a leopard. But anyway, you get the point. Let me open up and show you these. Now, these ones are made in Italy. They are beautiful, but they're no better than what I got, to be honest with you, apart from the fact they got the mouth open with the teeth showing. The one I got is nicely modelled. Not as nice, I don't think, but still nicely modelled. These ones are stamped Italy, but look at the price. £725. And they ain't the only one asking that money. There's half a dozen, if not more, if I was... Go back there. If I was to click on shopping... 725. Uh, there's another one around here somewhere. Oh, I got one of them. Look at that. 1850 for that boot. And I've actually got one of them sitting out in the passage that I'm using that I just haven't finished cleaning. Ooh. That was in one of my films a while back from Gatley Gay. In fact, we're going to save that page. Bear with me. I know it's a bit off topic. There we go. We're going to save that. So, go back to the Tigers. Um, and shopping. Yeah. Any more on you? There's another one of them boots, a thousand pound on them boots. They've gone up crazy money, haven't they? There's another one, but they're for a thousand. And I got one of them. Happy days. Okay. Um, I can't find them now with them uh, Tigers gone. Where are they gone? Okay, so we got, how much are you asking for yours? I think that's the same one. This one here is asking £419. So again, it's not the 725 the other was asking, but still really good money. Some are selling them as 60s, some are selling them as 70s, but they're all selling them as Italian. So if you see one, don't be, let's be honest, they're going to stand out, being that they're a tiger without the brain <laughs> for you to put a stick in. You're not going to forget them, are you? Let's be honest, with the teeth out and everything. If you stamped Italy, you know you got five, six, seven hundred pounds. Don't leave them behind. If you do, it's up to you, but uh, I'll be there buying it. Okay, next piece is just as confusing again. I have bought a 1960s Italian green onyx trinket box. It's got the gold-plated metal mount, bays on the base there. There's a bit of weight to the um, metal, not no huge weight, just a little bit. But overall, it's in really, really good condition. Now, these are all over the place again. Really confusing. Now, this one owes me two pounds. Okay, so if we look here, they're down as 1960s green onyx box. Now, there's an identical one there to what I got, £283. There's another one over here, identical to what I got, £139. There's a whole variety of them with feet, without feet. Look at the prices, three, four, five hundreds, three hundreds. Uh, this one there with the red marble veining going through it, 300. They're all over the place. Little casket one there, 285. Yeah, it's somebody but yeah, I sold four. 28 pound. There's another one there, 58 pound. There's one by you, identical to the one at the top of the page. The one at the top of the page, 300 pound. There's one year identical, 17 pound. All right, it's got a couple of chips on there. But neither you know there. How can you go from 300 to 17 pound? The prices literally are all over the place. You can find people selling them for 30 pound. You can find people selling them for 300 pound. It really makes no reason 
uh, as to why. In the 1960s, the Italian Green Onyx with the gold metal mounts. This one's in good condition. It only cost me £2. But let's be honest, I have absolutely no idea where the price is at the moment until I do a lot more research because the prices range from, I say, 30 to 300 You know, it was 10 times the money. So they're all over the place. They really are. But either way, it was £2. It was a cracking buy. It really was. Okay, so next piece I picked up this morning is a large nine-inch tall Bezik or Beswick Siamese cat in lovely condition. Fully stamped up, pattern number 1882. It's got the impressed Beswick England on there and uh, 1882. This was a whole three pounds, so about five dollars, give or take, maybe six dollars, five, six dollars. And again, if you use eBay, you're all over the place. Uh, top price year, sold price, 1950s, Bezig, 1882, Siamese cat, £37 sold. There's one underneath, 1918, so 20 quid. Another one year, £9, in very good condition, mind. £9 for a Beswick Siamese cat. And then underneath that, 499 and 399 uh, The one underneath, AF. I don't know about that one. Is that AF? Yeah, chipped on the years. So that doesn't really count. It's chipped. Um, but the cheapest day in good condition is £9. How the heck can they justify selling a nine-inch Bearswick cat for nine quid? I don't know. Um, it's just an example, yet again, of eBay where I know before you start saying I'm slagging eBay off, it's good. Uh, but it's got to the stage now where eBay is driving the prices down to the point where it's almost now impossible to make a profit. I list that at 30, 35 pound on the website, and I know I will get it. I'll get 30 pound, no problem at all, for a large nine inch tall Siamese cat. I really will, especially when it's by Deswick. But from 37 pounds sold on eBay to nine, nine pounds sold on eBay, you know, it's just all over the place. Okay, this next piece, I'm assuming is a large piece of empoli, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, I think it's Italian glass, uh, but it's multicolored. It's got um, the cream and white glass forming these sort of dimples. I'm hoping you can see them there. Uh, and in the light, it's absolutely spectacular. It's got like a honey color with the white dimples. So once it's cleaned and lit up, it's going to look spectacular. And it's not really doing it justice on the images. Hopefully that helps. It is going to be a beautiful thing. So once it's lit up, you get the um, effect then of the dimples and then the amber foot. Anyhow, I think it's uh, empty, but I'm going to have to check the makers. It's a large piece. It's got to be close to 18 inches, two foot tall, with the amber foot and the amber cream and opaque glass. But that's the price it cost me, £3.50. I didn't knock it down and pay the full price. Vars like that should be £25, £30 of anybody's money, maybe even £35. It's in lovely condition, and it's just a nice... Real nice, tall glass vase, elegant. It's big enough that it'll be a standalone um, statement piece in a plain room. But for three pound fifty for you know an Italian hand blown or Italian glass vase like that, you know, I won't need it. Okay, um, I've had a few pieces of silver. I'm going to show you one or two today. Um, first of all, I had this, which is a nine carat gold and sterling silver fob. And it was for C and D A F L, um, which is a football club of some description. I haven't searched up yet. Division three, uh, 1933 medal, fully hallmarked. Now I paid fifteen pound for that, uh, but once it's cleaned up, it's a football medal from the thirties with the gold football on the front. Um, that'll be absolutely fine. I've got to look it up. Um, Let's see if I can find out who that football club is. So I paid £15 for that, which is quite a bit. But I do like fobs. 
had a large, he quite a heavy gauge sterling silver sifter. This is the second one I've had this week. Um, I got another one around you somewhere. It might have been in my last video. Uh, it's the second one in a week. It was that the same one as I filmed the other day? Bear with me. I want to make sure I'm not filming the same one. I'll leave that in a minute because I'm not sure if that's the one I filmed the other day or if this is the new one. So I'll have to double check where the other one is. This was cute. I purchased a Victorian fairin. So probably German porcelain, but uh, an old porcelain fairin. Uh, you have two people diving into bed there, and the inscription at the bottom reads, the first to bed, uh, the last to bed, rather, puts the light out. Nice Victorian fairin. It's a nice early one. Now, these can range anything from £150 all the way down to a tenner. I can tell you, I looked at these on the day, and there were some, again, sold on eBay, yet again, £30, £40, and some sold for a tenner. Again, I paid a pound for it, um, so I'm happy, happy enough. It's absolutely fine, um, and I rate that about twenty-five pounds somewhere over there. Okay, I'm going to leave it by there. Um, I got plenty more to film, but I'll put them in another film, and I'll get back to that silver sifter. Hopefully you've enjoyed having a look at the pieces that have come out of spot. I've paid for some, others have come in for nothing. Um, but you've got to admit, when you can buy 18th century Meissen, uh, 19th century Kitschy at a car boot sale, you're doing well. Thanks for watching. Um, really appreciate and I would always appreciate a like, comment or especially a share. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye for now.